All right, so today what we're going to do, you guys are probably getting tired of watching these Mercedes videos, but it's just what we're doing right now, right? Um, so today what we're going to do, we're going to do the oil change video on this, and we got to pull the Porsche out. Whoa there, buddy. There we go. Got to pull the Cayman out first, and then we're going to do the oil change. So if you guys want to see how to change oil on a twin turbo Mercedes, well, stay tuned. All right, had to open up all the doors and windows because, well, the Cayman's pretty stanky. It's got catless exhaust on it, so it's got the old chain smell, and chainsaw smell to it. Got her pulled in, everything looking good, a little bit dirty. I drove it the other day home and it was raining a little bit. It's a little bit dusty. Came in some way, deserves a so slightly dusty. Let's place air out just a minute. We'll get this thing up on the lift, which uh, is kind of interesting, kind of risky. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull well, we don't really need to pull this off. Let's pull this off and this out of the way. One-handed. Well, there you go, right? We're going to get a inch and sixteenth socket. So what we're going to need here is a few things. An inch and sixteenth socket. It does not have to be deep well. That's just what I grabbed. You will need a 13 mil to drain the oil. You're going to need a legitimate oil filter, either a man or a Mercedes or something like legitimate, not not Chinese. That brings me to the oil. A lot of controversy on any car we get in here, no matter what the maker model, internet's full of people trying to say this oil, that oil is better. Here's what we know for a fact. Mercedes said to use 0W40 from the factory. Then they had a bulletin saying, oh no, don't use that. Don't use that. It'll mess the engine up. So everybody stopped using that. Then everybody went to 5W40, 10W40. A lot of guys even use 10W60 like the M5. Well, I don't want to use that. That's like, it's like pouring honey in your engine, right? We don't want it that thick. So you cannot buy a 5W40 locally. I did not want to get 0W40, so we got 10W40 fully synthetic mobile one. It's high mileage oil. Doesn't matter, no. It doesn't matter at all. It's just what they had on the shelf, right? So we're gonna change that with our man filter. What we're first gonna do we're going to break this loose. I wonder if I could set this up here. Can I set this up here? Or is it going to crash out? Let's see. Around the fender. Oh, that's risky. Risky. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. We're going to break this first loose first because what we want to do is let all that drain back into the oil pan before we drain it. Before we drain the whole engine, we want to let this go back into the oil pan, right? So we're loose. Oh, 
We'll lift it up real slow, give it a second to drain. A lot of guys saying, oh, you gotta take off the intake pipe. Well, what the hell kind of mechanic are you if you can't slip past that? So what we got here, we have a Hintz HEN GST, the same filter we put in, um, we put in the cabin air filter. It's kind of like an off-brand German filter, in my opinion, right? And that's what this is. Is that a bad filter? No, I mean, it's kind of looking tattered right there, but I don't think it's actually a bad filter. Good enough, we'll call that the bare minimum, right? That's fine. A lot of you guys probably say, oh yeah, this old Hintz is a factory filter. It's way better than man. Somebody always be that guy in the comments, always. Okay. I guess while we're still over here, let's grab the new filler. Let's go ahead and just screw it in there. It is taking the old one out. Remember how it goes. So the felt piece goes like this. That piece goes in the bottom of the cup. Let's pull and twist. It comes right out. Snap in. We're gonna take a pick and we're going to remove this ring. We're going to put the new ring on like this. Always, always, always get a little bit of oil where it's sitting in the threads down there and we're gonna rub it on that ring. So whenever we put the ring or the cap on, it doesn't mess anything up. That's the biggest thing a lot of guys do wrong um, is that in the next thing, my hands free, I'm going to show you here. The next thing is twerking it back down. This is where most people and most shops go wrong because we've seen a lot of stuff come through. We're tightening it down. Right there, it's snug. Like it stopped, right? And that's it. Don't hog it down. If you hog it down, you're an asshole. Because, not to be frank, but you are. Well, how many cars have got in here that the shop or the dealer was maintaining and somebody just hogged that down with a big ass wrench? And man, I've had some of them, they're so tight, it was starting to strip out the plastic piece, the plastic nut on some of the BMWs. And we had to use a, a cheater pipe, three foot cheater pipe with a ratchet to get it done. I wanna show you something here. And that's what makes these G-Wagons so common to fall off the lifts. I don't even really wanna walk around this thing to be honest with you. This is where you have to put the, the box at, which is, well, let me here, let me do this, Jesus Christ. Is right there. And you can see it's just sitting on the frame. And back here, it's also sitting on the frame. And the whole issue with these are the frame swoops up in front, swoops up in the back. So if you get a better perspective, the arms are not very far apart. Right? The arms are about three foot apart. Is it going to fall off? No, it's not going to fall off, but there's a lot of weight hanging over the back and you got to have the front arms up as far as you can, right? As it starts swooping up, but not too far because all the weight of the engines hanging over the front, all right? Sketchy. 
Okay, so we're under the front here. Let me see if this camera is going to get it. I don't know what the low light is like on this camera. It's not too bad. You can see right there is the actual drain plug. I'll get you in here a little closer. As you can see it there, it's a 13 mil. So we're just going to go ahead and pop that. So here's the drain plug. And they don't give you a new crush washer in these. If you want to replace that, go ahead and replace it. That's up to you. Usually if it looks good though, there's never any issue. I got a whole box of them here. We just have to locate them. If I had the right one, we'll just replace it. No problem. Here's this guy here. And it's all draining out right now. You can see it's pretty damn black. Uh, this thing has a little bit of oil seepage. I thought it was this lower oil pan right there leaking, but I don't think so. I think it's actually maybe a valve cover problem or as they say, a timing cover problem. So we'll know more about that whenever we do the spark plugs. All right. So first things first, let's just go ahead and take this off because it's going to be right in the damn way. I'm going to take that off. Let's get a rag. Do a little pre clean up here before we go any further. Be careful not to knock anything down in there, but to still clean the groove out. That's pretty good. I still see one little spot. That's right here. So let me see if I got that funnel. If that funnel I got is going to work. Let me look down the hole here. Yeah, it looks like I won't because the cam gear is right there. So I don't know if our camera's in the way or not. Let's give her the old college try here. Oh yeah. Yep, poured a little bit down in there. But that's what it's there for, right? They're five quart jugs, so we're going to pour this whole one in it. And pretty much all the second one, except for about a quart. Well, something like that. All would have set for about a quart. Probably two quarts left. We're probably about there. Look at that. Pretty much right on the money. We're just a shy, little tiny little bit short of nine quarts in there. And that should be perfect. So when we check it here, we should be over full. Let me wipe this up. Actually, about almost a quart over full on the dipstick. And then whenever we start it up, that's going to suck it down and put us right at the level mark. That's done. Well, I've got a little bit of gravy down there. Let me wipe that out. And we'll be a good boy. We'll toss our rag over here in the green bucket. Take these off before we touch the camera. And there it is. All finished up. We'll start it. We'll take our light. We'll make sure nothing's dripping out of the filter. And that's it. We're done with that. Where to do it. We got the door all the way closed. The door has to be closed. We have not position two, position one on the key. We'll balance you guys on here. And then at that point in time, we need to, I got to look it up again. This is a complex one. Position one, press the down button repeatedly to bring up the mileage. Right there. 
push the phone button, then the OK button and hold them. Go down to Assist Plus. Full service. And then, let me see if it shows. Configure full service. Great oil 229.5, service carried out. And yes. Cannot be undone. And confirm. Full service carried out. That's it, my friends. Yeah, so I'm pretty much there it is. Uh, not a very difficult car to, to work on by any means. Uh, everything else seems like it's pretty good as far as getting two stuff in there. And even though it, on the video it looks compact, it really does. But it's really not. So that's going to be it, guys. Hope you liked today's video. And if you did, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up. We'll see you very soon with another video. Have a good day.